Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa. I'm uh, going to wait for a few moments until we bring this beautiful energy together. Hello, Michael. How are you? So good to be here, isn't it? It's so good to be present, to be here and now, and either connected via this beautiful place we call it Facebook Live, and all of those who are together and uh, holding space for one another, either in close approximately approximately or right here. So welcome and thank you for being here. Hi, Dawn. Hi, love. It's so good to be here with you. For those of you who do not know me, I am Lisa Bubari uh, by trade. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and uh, what I call Heal Within. What we do is uh, help you transform for the better, healthier, through alternative healing methods. Today is Tuesday, of course. This is Heal Talk Tuesday. And uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Are you all ready for your Valentine? Hello, beautiful. Um, are you ready for your Valentine's? Uh, what are you going to do? And uh, so go ahead and share your beautiful messages of Valentine, of love. Uh, I know today I was given this beautiful flowers. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. So what is love? What is Valentine's? I think just uh, bringing the environment of joy and love to our own environment. Like every single week I have fresh flowers that I go and get and bring it to my office. That in itself is creating a loving environment and having one rose, even if we pick it from our garden and hand it to someone, that's like sharing love. A smile, a friendly text, a smiley, a heart, everything that conveys my heart to you, I care for you, I love you, um, is a loving way, is a loving gesture. So today I'm going to be talking about love, and we're going to talk about mind-body connection, um, my work, how hypnosis, and how I help with my clients, how I help my clients through hypnotherapy or even coaching of of that sort with attracting love and why is it that some of us deter love some of us attract love and different modalities of love right in I was born in Iran so in the language of Farsi I believe I have shared this there are so many levels of expressing like and love so we say I like this item I like the weather I enjoy the environment I enjoy where I am I enjoy what I have I like the car or the material stuff that I have oh my god I love this so there is a love level for material things and a love level for one human to another. Not only that, with this, we have different levels of how we love another person. So the love of parents, there is another way of saying it, duset dara. There is another way of saying, I love you as a boyfriend or girlfriend. And then there is the ultimate love that I am immersely in love with you. And what I like to say is instead of falling in love with someone, how about we are in love and we 
feel love, total love for that person. Uh, words do matter. And I like the association of words, even in my language in uh, Armenian, there is love and then there is the infatuated love. And in French, it's je t'aime, which is I love you. Uh, and this is not about language, it's like the beautiful way of expressing love. And how do we attract the people in our life? In, have you been in a situation? Hi, Ani. How are you, sweetie? Hello, Rachel. Welcome. Have you been in a situation that you, you're sitting and talking to someone and you see a couple and you look at them and go, they seem very happy, but how did this two connect? Because it's like it's a mismatch, right? And sometimes we have been in relationships for whatever reason, we feel so attracted. What I like to call the chemistry is so incredible that we can't take our hands off of one another. But outside of the sensuality and sexuality part of that, it's like it's two different lifestyles and one has nothing to do with another. Do you know anyone like that? Have you been in a relationship that has been so hot and passionate and yet you don't have much in common? But when you come together, that's like magic, it's fire, right? That I like to call, it's this um, passion, this descent, just, I want to say just like dogs, but humans, we have this scent. We are so scent oriented. Just think about this. From the moment we are born, uh, the chemistry, the body odor of the mother and a child. And from the moment we are placed upon our mom's bosoms, the smell of the skin, the odor of the body. Every one of us has a scent. And everybody talks about dogs go around smelling and smelling and that's where they leave their marks. We human beings are very much the same. It's chemistry and it's scent. So we may like someone, but when we sit next to them, it might be, even though they showered, it's either their perfume or their body order and something may repel us or just, we can't, we, we can't help ourselves just to wanting to be with them. And that is the beautiful thing that so many of us ignore. And in relationships that we stay together, have you been in a relationship or friends with someone that you enjoy being around? And it's the same thing. It's a child finding, wanting to be attached to his or her mom. It's that connection to not only the person, the essence, but also the odor the smell, the chemistry that they have been used to for nine months and continue on. So the bond from the, from the moment they are being fed, milked, on the bosom, held, loved, connected. And that's what the bond we create, the attraction of love is so much chemistry. And, uh, if you are in a relationship that it's become, let me give you an example. I had a client approximately four or five years ago who wanted to get married, going through extreme anxiety, extreme anxiety, a lot of uh, 
problems with her sensuality, her intimacy. So she came for hypnotherapy because she had done all kinds of therapy and they could not figure it out. Before I go further, I want you to ex I want to explain this subconscious mind of ours. It's amazing because it's truly the storage. It's the storehouse. It's this powerhouse that stores every habit, every behavior, every odor, every connection from the moment we are born until this very moment. So by doing that, it's got information in there that the subconscious mind has absolutely no emotions. It's like it takes orders and it responds to orders that we think and we feel. By doing this, it's like it operates just like a machine. You ask it to do something and it will do so. You train it to do something, it will do so. You edit it and it will keep the new edited file and the rest goes into archive. Got it so far? Are you with me? Okay. So, yes, emojis. Let me know what you think by having that information, that knowledge. What we did was tap, was tap into her subconscious mind to see why she's having so much anxiety. This client was about to get engaged. Subconsciously, she had a fear. And she didn't understand. She knew there's a block. She knew there's a fear. She knew she's going through anxiety, but not understanding why. So in just a few sessions, we tap into her subconscious mind that had held on to a thought process because her brother had been diagnosed with HIV. Her fear was, I don't want to go get tested. I don't want to go become intimate because what if I have the same blood, the same disease? And she didn't want to do any of the testing because she didn't want to know the reality of it. So that fear in itself had created so much block and inflammation in her body. Her feet were swelling up. She was having so much inflammation and inflammatory problems. Not, not to say the least, her blocks and anxiety about her intimacy. So I want to give you one information. Stagnation in itself is a cause, is one of the causes of inflammation. So when there is an inflammation in our body, I look to see where in their life, what part of their body it's affecting. So the feet is about moving forward. When she has inflammation on the feet and the legs, it's telling me what is it that she's holding onto and not moving forward. What part of that was stagnant? So if there is a fear and there is a stagnation, that's how we started until we got to the point of finding out the emotional connection. Her fear was, if I get tested or if I am intimate with this person who wanted to love her and be with her, that little girl inside, that self preserving part of her, the body that protects her. And her reaction was, I don't want to be intimate. I don't want to be tested because I don't want to find out I may have HIV. So can you relate to this? This in itself. And it can be in our life how we hold ourselves back even though what we want in life is something different. Through hypnosis, we found that 
And as she tapped into her subconscious and figured it out, that was the evoking part. The embracing is, I better deal with the reality. So let's, and we went together to get tested for her to test. And she did. And her answer was negative. Within hours, within, not hours, within hours, her anxiety went down. She started laughing. She laughed not only how much of burden she had created on herself. And within a few days, the inflammation reduced and almost to nothing. And, of course, she is now married. They have two kids. In four years, they have two kids. And everything was a blessing. So our psyche, our body, what we want sometimes may be something that we desire, but something holds us and we don't know what it is. And it's so easy through hypnotherapy for us to tap into our subconscious mind, the, this hub that stores all that information, and edit. Just go in and edit or find the means to help ourselves. I hope that makes sense. To you. Another example I can say is a client who walked in uh, maybe about 10 years ago who wanted to date this one guy and he was interested in someone else. She came in with resentment. She came in with anger and jealousy about how he was attracted to this other lady, this other woman, that she thought that person was a bimbo, a blonde bimbo, and that's what she used to call it and word it, and that she didn't have much to offer and she couldn't understand that although they had gone out dating, why is he more attracted to her? That resentment and jealousy and the, having that angst was creating more negativity inside her. And she was eating more. So when we come to a point that they come in for weight loss or uh, they have tried a lot of the diets, they've done exercise, so you, you've done all the yo-yo things, which I call the emotional yo-yo, and stopping in within ourselves to find out if there is a misalignment to what we want and what we want to feel. So if we are eating more, it's to, literally, it's to put a Band-Aid or to fill a hole. And that hole could be a constant opening of a hole because Underneath that opening is lack of self-esteem, lack of confidence. And we can have a lot of confidence, but the self-esteem of I am as good as that person. Uh, that person is a human being. So by my negativity, I am deterring love towards me. Does that make sense? When there is negativity, when we have this emotional weight and burden that we just protect ourselves with, love cannot penetrate because it's not light, it's not loving. So what I like to call it is peel away the labels, peel away the negativity and jealousy and doubt and anger so that we feel lighter. And when we feel lighter, we are lighter. We only eat so much because it's not an emotional eating that we go after. It's not a hold that we're feeling because that hold does not fill up with food. It's a temporary feeling. And it can be eating, drinking, smoking, gambling, cheating, all of those negative things that I call. She had even colored her hair blonde. And here is the misalignment. 
thinking that if she's blonde, he would be more attracted to her. And yet her words were, why is he attracted to that bimbo, blonde bimbo? And yet she had made herself blonde. So what she was saying, if she was to look in the mirror, and that's what we did, I had her stand in front of the mirror and say, look in the mirror and what do you see? Tell me what do you see? She said, I see me. And I said, and what does your me look like? From the top all the way down. What part of you do you enjoy, like, appreciate, accept? Right? Because it's not only internally that we are good, we are giving, and we constantly want to please and do good but we are also about what we look like. If we like ourselves in the mirror, so the alignment is from the outside to the inside, from the inside to the outside. I have no idea. So when we say, I want you to feel better from the inside out, I have no idea what that person's inside is. Sometimes they don't. So here's my question to you, for all of you who are here. What brings joy to you right now? Can you just share with me what brings joy to you? What brings smile to your face? What can I say? What can I do? What can anybody? How do you feel joy? That's a much better way to say. How do you feel joy? How do you feel loved? Go ahead. I'll wait. I want to see. Just share with me. What brings you joy? Hmm? Is it a flower? Is it a hug? Is it a kiss? Thank you. But joy comes in many ways. And we feel joy sometimes by knowing that if I go home and I am not interrupted with phone calls, with kids, expectations, and I can walk in, place my bag, and just sit, feel welcomed. So many people who go home are not greeted with a smile, and they don't feel welcomed. I know. Years ago, when I used to be married, when they said, so what happened to your marriage? It's like, really? Why did it break up? Is because when I talk about you matter, the core of that means I want to feel valued. I want to be appreciated. I want to be accepted. And that goes from boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife, friendships, even in our family, our parents, children. We want to feel accepted and cherished. And I like to say women like to be cherished and loved and men like to be respected and loved. And I'm not saying that women don't want to be respected, but in a, uh, in a couple's, because we're talking about love, it's cherished. So a rose from a garden, it's the thought that I pick and I bring and I say, I was thinking about you and here is this one flower. Or it's not a bouquet of flowers, a dozen of flowers that I have it sent to you or I have the florist send 
to you. And it's my duty to send it to you because I want to make sure that you're going to be smiling. But if it is from the heart and that person walks in or sends the flowers or cherishes you, either with one rose that is meaningful or a bouquet of roses, it's the intention behind it that matters. Physical pain fades away. Emotional pain lingers. So when we have all those stories that we have inside us, is because of we took every picture of what is happening and we bank the feelings that are absolutely amazing. And we love and cherish those moments. And you bank it. That becomes a part of memory. In therapy, in hypnotherapy, when we tap into our subconscious mind, as I said, the subconscious has absolutely no emotions. It's us putting the emotional connection to it. By example, if you broke your leg or your finger uh, a year ago, you still remember which finger or your leg is or your toe. You banged it. The pain has gone away, and yet the memory is still with you because you still remember it. Remember it. So that's a moment, a picture banked into your memory, into that archive with absolutely no pain at that very moment. And the same thing is with relationships. We may remember good relationships, love, being cherished, or at the same time, very hurtful relationships, very hurtful um, connections with a partner, abusive relationships and becoming aware of them, acknowledging it and saying, what do I need to change so that I can stand up for myself, have a voice for myself and cherish, respect and love myself first. It's closing that gap, closing that hole instead of feeding it with temporary stuff. So the next time we are attracted to that person and you're sitting with them, close your eyes. As a matter of fact, you can do this exercise by yourself with the person you care for or the person you are moving away from. How is this person enhancing my life or when I am with them, how do I feel? Do I feel good or do I feel repelling? Does my body repel by being around this person? Or I can't wait to come close to this person. And when I do, I easily hug. I enjoy being connected, either holding their hand or just surrendering and allowing myself to be one and connect to this person heart to heart body to body hand to hand doesn't matter we're human beings we're connected we're sensual people we are sexual people and it's just charisma of this incredible called some something called chemistry hmm? with that I want you to attract and be open to attract love and light attract and surrender to all good and if there is any hurt any uh, jealousy negativity resentment within you towards someone Find out what it is. And sometimes 
this is what I want to do. I want to show you about um, a rope. Look at this. This, it's tied, right? I like to call, sometimes we get into uh, any contract, any agreement, either a friendship, a relationship, marriage, everything is a choice, everything is a contract. We, uh, we buy something and there is an exchange. It's an exchange of uh, decisions we make, it's an exchange of vows, it is an exchange of contract or exchange of money or service. There's always an exchange between two people, two groups, and everything. It's tying a knot. But if this knot, if this thread, as long, I'm sorry, I'm looking down, I'm trying to find, I'm try, I was trying to find my scissor. Which I can't. Okay, and I can't break this. Uh, if this thread were to, I know, it's not incredible. I just showed you my emergency uh, protection. If this thread that I have put a knot, I can put a knot in here, right here, right? Another knot. As long as we create knots, we can undo them and say, okay, in this relationship, I've gone through hardships, pain, hurt, all this, and they can be undone. But if I were to take in, if I cut this, if I separate this, other than Michael Mesmer, who's a magician, and if I tie this two ends together, and then I have to tie it again, no matter what happens, we know there was a cut. So what I like to say is, if there is a relationship that you can mend and tie knots, and as long as that relationship is not cut, in two parts because no matter what it is if it comes together we always remember that there was a discord and there was a separation and that's where the blames come the past comes you did this you did that and no matter how many times we want to make good although the nuts that can be undone when there is a cut it's very difficult. It's much difficult to heal a cut, emotional, mental, than the knots in our lives that I call challenges and experiences. May you always have a loving shield protecting yourself this, with this invisible shield that I like to call the universal light or God's light, God's shield, protecting you, that it's invisible and no one else can see. And just like a beautiful globe, a snow globe, that has that beautiful shield protecting this figurine inside and all that snow, all the thoughts, ideas, concepts, images, the every experience and everything. When it settles down, you can see the figurine. And that figurine of that snow globe is always on a base, grounded, protected. And I like to call that base as our body that protects us and shields us. So if that base or body, this protection is who we are. 
all the thoughts and everything, all the behaviors, challenges, experiences, when we go to sleep, it all comes to calmness. The serenity of it, of accepting who you are. So as you breathe in, bringing oxygen and vitality inside, say, I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. I attract love towards me. I surround myself with light and I surrender to goodness, to loving, because you are love, you come from love, you are worthy to be loved, and we have so much to give. I hope this resonates with you. If there is any stagnation, if there is any help that I can give and help you transform your life, your body, in order for you to move towards your most dominant thought pattern of attracting love, attracting success, attracting joy, attracting appreciating yourself by all means i'm here for you as i like to close every session is by saying evoke what was embrace what is and evolve to what will be because you do matter so to wrap it up Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Bring joy. Go out. Do something good for yourself. Even if it is to take a walk and appreciate the trees, the birds, your existence, your home, your safety, wherever it is. And buy a gift for yourself. Buy a rose, a flower, your favorite flower your favorite item, even if it is something as small as a piece of, <laughs> I keep going to my drawers to see what I can come up with. Ah, you know, chocolate, yes? Uh, that brings a smile to my face, it brings uh, salivation to my mouth, it brings good things to my body because dark chocolate is also good for so many things. Uh, and that's the beauty. The smallest thing can make, make us and smallest thing can also break us. Choose what enhances and makes you smile. Now, to close, I would love every single woman, it, I would not be a businesswoman if I didn't finish it by saying, I would love nothing. Wouldn't it be great for you to also share this joy because I want to share this joy, the joy of 3E, and uh, invite you to be a part of my sixth annual 3E event. And what do you know what three stands for? Three is my favorite number, my birthday. E is uh, evoke, embrace, evolve. But more importantly, I like to show this. This is three and E. The top part of the three and E are not connected, only the bottom, the lower part. And what that means is we as human beings are always connected. We are interlinked no matter what you say. We're all together. But if we face the three and E, I did it 
I did it in a wrong way, but it's the three and E facing one another. Do you see this? Which in a way is like doing this. When we say the shape of a woman, we just go like this. So it's like mirroring the three and E mirroring one another and creates this beautiful shape, what we call the shape of a woman. And by doing so, because they are not symmetrically the same, it means we are perfect with all our imperfections. And I want you to know that one side of our face is not the same as the other. Our feet, our hand, every part of us is unique, not different. It is different, but it is the uniqueness that creates who we are. And it's the uniqueness of who you are that matters. And may you find the person who appreciates, cherishes you, respects you, and loves you surround you as you place yourself in their existence so that you can also share your love and goodness to them. Thank you and uh, God bless. Today we went a little bit longer and I dedicate this beautiful rose and I'm not going to say he loves me or he loves me not. What is there not to love, right? <laughs> Thank you. May you have an incredible Valentine's. You matter to me. And if there is anything I can help you, please know that I am here for you. Stand by you to hold your hand. If need be, stand behind you so you can lean upon me. And there's times that I will be honored to stand in front of you to protect you. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye-bye.